Hello! In this video I would like to tell you about some weird features of demodulation. Maybe that it will be new for some of you. In the introduction I remind some basic information about the demodulation process. The advanced users can skip this part. We will talk about measurement of bearing condition. It is usually based on fourth frequency analyzing. What is the fourth frequency? Let's suppose there is pitting on the outer race. Every ball passing through pitting causes the short vibration shock. Let's suppose that just one crack exists on outer race. According the speed frequency, we get the time interval t between shocks. It is the repeating time between shocks. In our example, t is equal 0.1 second. The value equal 1 divided by t is the repeating frequency of shocks. This frequency we label as fourth frequency. In this example it is the outer race fourth frequency. This is the spectrum of time signal with shocks. You can see that most of shocks energy is from 2 to 10 kHz. It means that the accelerometer must measure in this frequency range and we should measure in acceleration. The users often think that accelerometer must measure the fourth frequency, which can be very low. Absolutely not. It is a big mistake. This spectrum doesn't contain the fourth frequency peaks. Now we know that spectrum is not good tool for fourth frequency analysis because they are not visible in a normal spectrum. Much better tool is the demodulation spectrum which shows the fourth frequency to us. Additionally, the harmonics are displayed because of signal distortion. It is not pure sine wave. That is why we see harmonics. But it doesn't matter. We can see the fourth frequency clearly. Let's describe shortly the demodulation process. In the beginning we measure time signal in a high frequency range. Usually the 25 kHz. You can ask why. After all the fourth frequencies are so low. Yes, it is true. But I repeat again. We don't measure the fourth frequency. We measure shocks. And shocks contain very high frequencies, typically between 500 Hz and 25 kHz. The initial raw signal contains also the speed frequency and the harmonics. We are not interested of them. That is why we firstly use the demodulation filtering. You can set it to any specific frequencies but the band pass from 500 Hz to 25 kilohertz always works for standard machines. For heavy, low-speed machines you should use, for example, 100 Hz instead 500 Hz. Filtered signal contains just shocks and is ready for demodulation. If we want to see fourth frequencies in spectrum, we must add the energy to each shock and change the shape of shock. Original shape is too much variable. FFT is not sensitive for such shape. And the FFT works with signal energy, not with the peak values. We use the enveloping process for that. It adds the energy and changes the shape. You can imagine the enveloping like simple electrical circuit. The shock comes and charges the capacitor C. Then the capacitor is discharged through the resistor R. This discharging 
is much longer than the length of original shock. You can see that RMS value of shock after enveloping is much higher and the shape is changed too. After enveloping we received this signal shape and now it is the time to apply the spectrum. This spectrum we call demodulation spectrum. We can clearly see the four frequencies with harmonics. Now I am starting to talk about the main subject of this video. Let's suppose the bearing with just one crack on outer rays. The signal after demodulation filtering looks like this. The time interval between shocks is 0.1 second and it exactly corresponds to fourth frequency which is 10 Hz. This is the time signal after enveloping. And this is the demodulation spectrum made from that signal. We can see the 10 Hz amplitude and the harmonics. I define the delta cursor from 5 to 95 Hz to get the RMS sum of 10 Hz and all harmonics. This delta RMS value is 0.27 Gs. Now we are increasing the number of cracks. It means that bearing condition is worse. But look at the trend of delta cursor. It should clearly increase, but it doesn't. When we analyze this trend, we probably say that the condition is stable. I try to explain such weird behavior. This enveloped time signal was taken from the bearing with one crack. The signal range is from 0 to 2.05 G. It means the peak peak AC value is 2.05 Gs. This envelope time signal was taken from bearing with 50 cracks. The signal range is from 1.1 to 2.2 Gs. It means the peak peak AC value is just 1.1 Gs. It is less than the case with one crack. And that is the trick. The increasing number of cracks can decrease the amplitudes on fourth frequencies and harmonics. This graph contains the trend of DC part of the modulation spectrum. It is the amplitude of line zero. And what we see? The perfect trend from which we can perfectly evaluate the bearing condition. When we analyzed the fourth frequency and harmonics in the modulation spectra, we completely overlooked the DC value in line zero. It was a mistake. The DC trend is good tool. If the demodulation spectrum shows the fourth frequency, it is just the evidence that something happens on outer rays, for example. But its AC amplitude is not perfect tool for condition evaluation. Unfortunately, many analyzers remove several first spectrum lines and set them to zero. It is unacceptable. They destroy important information in spectrum. Of course, Adash instruments don't do it. Adash instruments offer a very good tool to avoid such situation. It is demodulated overall value. It works from 0 Hz. It means the DC part is included to the calculation. You can see that it works perfectly. The bearing condition is worse and worse and the values are bigger and bigger. And that is what we expect. I hope that you enjoyed this a little weird video. Perhaps it can help you to understand some specific situations which can occur in practice. Thank you for watching.